What are you doing? You don't get us in trouble with that kid playing around here. You know what a lawyer called a junkyard? An attractive nuisance. And where did you hear that? On oh, Perry Mason rerun. <laughs> Look at these bills. We ain't gonna make it. What do you keep saying that for? Well, we got 30 bucks between us, and we got bills here to total over $200. <laughs> we ain't gonna make it. <laughs> if only you and Bubba hadn't thrown away that money at the racetrack. Listen, son, betting on a horse ain't throwing away money. It's like making an investment. Is that so? Yes, that is so. See, it's like investing in a piece of property. Only thing, that this piece of property had a whole lot of lead in it. <laughs> well, then what do you suggest? Because we ain't gonna make it. Well, listen, we gotta figure out something. What do you think we ought to do? Only thing I can figure out is just to, to sell the best thing we got in the junkyard. The best thing we got in the yard is a bathtub with a ring around it. Well, let's pawn the ring. <laughs> well, that's what the welfare thing is set up for, for people in financial trouble. Now, what do you think we pay taxes for? We'd just be taking advantage of something that was set up for people like us. What does that mean, people like us? Well, you know, poor people, the have-nots. The have-nots? Well, if the have-nots could get something from the haves, say the haves gave the have-nots half of what they have, then the haves would still be the haves, but the have-nots would be the have something. <laughs> Stop. You know, we both agreed that we was in the business to sell junk pop, not save it. I told you this morning to get the... <laughs> There's no place to put anything in there. Why didn't you do what I asked you, Pop? I started to, son. I mean, it really, I did. Look here, sit down, let me tell you something. <laughs> See, I had, to, I had to play these records here because they brought back memories. I mean, real sweet memories. You know, uh, St. Louis. 1933, Club Riviera. <laughs> Prohibition had just been repealed. And, and me and your mama was toasting each other. We had some 3.2 beer and some wine. <laughs> See, you take that beer and mix it with the wine and call it top and bottom. <laughs> yeah, you drink a quart of that, you wouldn't know your top from your bottom. I'm gonna put you on a diet. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make you a lean, mean sex machine. <laughs> Fred, I've been on and off diets all my life, mostly off. Listen, 2000. <laughs> I mean, Cal. <laughs> you just can't give up that easy. I mean, you gotta tell yourself, I can do it. I can do it. You know that kid story about the little engine that had to pull a train up a steep hill? Yeah, I know that dumb story. Well, see, that little engine had to convince himself that he could do it. But, and he did it by saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. See, pitch all them women out there, blondes, brunettes, redheads. Think I can, I think I can. Think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I think I can, 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 I think I can. Look, Jason, you can stay around here and play, but just be careful and don't get into nothing, okay? Thanks, Lamont. All right. Listen, what are you doing? You don't get us in trouble with that kid playing around here. What's wrong with that, Pop? You know what a lawyer called a junkyard? An attractive nuisance. A uh, what? An attractive nuisance. And where did you hear that? On oh, Perry Mason rerun. <laughs> are you gonna start? No, no, see, it's true. See, it's me and that named Marcel Colton called on Perry Mason. But see, Perry Mason was taking a steam bath, so he had to talk to Perry Mason's secretary. I don't want to hear about it, Pop. Della Street. She, she's good looking for a white woman. <laughs> I'd like to ask Perry Mason if he'd come out here and help me lift this stove off this truck. Well, you better ask him because I ain't gonna lift it. <laughs> see, you've been conned. You've been conned, robbed, and ripped off. <laughs> what are you talking about? Sit down, sit down, because this is gonna take some time. See, now, these two guys were working together. The first guy comes in here complaining that you took advantage of his wife. And he's, he, he buys a commode off you and even gives you a profit. Now you know it's valuable. So then here comes the second guy, the antique dealer. And he tells you, if you can buy it back off the other guy, then he'll buy it from you. So you give the first guy, Osborne, a check for $300 made out to cash. And he rushes right to the bank and cash it. Then you don't see neither one of these guys again. You don't believe me, do you? Yeah, I believe you, except for two things. What? A, I already put the check for $200 in the bank, and B, I still got the valuable commode. And C, I called the bank this morning, and the check is still bouncing. And D, 
D, I had a guy coming in this morning in a praise he's come over. And? They were 20 bucks each. He said he had appraised 14 of them this week. See, those two guys that worked this whole neighborhood. <laughs> Son, you've been had bad. I can't believe it. Well, it's your own fault. If you hadn't been greedy, they couldn't even work the deal. You see, son, always remember what the Bible said. He that liveth by the sword shall be stuck in. <laughs> John, isn't it? Who told you? Winston. You know how close we are. <laughs> I you tell me. Well, I'm trying to keep John separate from you. Why don't you never talk about him? There's nothing around here to remind you of him. No pictures, no souvenirs, no nothing. Why? Well, it's just I'm trying my best to get on with my life. But the only way you're going to get over him is get it out of your system. Be strong. Let it go. Talk about it. How he looked, how he dressed, the smell of his aftershave lotion. <laughs> See? Don't you feel better? <laughs> I feel terrible. Well, you gotta feel terrible before you can feel better. Why? I don't know. I read it in Jet. I got a traffic ticket, Pop. A dumb traffic ticket. Uh, let me see. Failure to yield to the right of way. What'd you do that for? I didn't. I know you didn't. That's what failing means. <laughs> you, you were supposed to do something and didn't do it, and then not doing it, that means that you did it. Hey, you, you shouldn't have did it, but you did it, didn't you? Well, the situation is that I had the green light, but I still got a ticket for failing to yield to a guy who jumped the red light. Well, if you had the green light, you can't get a ticket. You can if the light is green and you black and the cop is white. <laughs> you say you're innocent. That's right. What are you going to do about it? What do you mean, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to pay it. What else? Well, you can't pay that ticket if you're right. If you're right, you got to fight it. Oh, come on, Pop. Don't be ridiculous. You can't fight a traffic ticket. I'm not being ridiculous. You are. Now, look, you get a ticket from a white cop in a blue uniform in a black neighborhood and make you so mad that you see red. And you ain't going to fight it because you do yellow. Now, what are you? What are you, a man or a box of crayon? Say, pardon me, miss. Uh, you work here? I'm a customer, and I'm looking for a birthday present for my husband. Uh, why don't you get a face mask? Oh. <laughs> I said, you know one of those masks, you know, like you wear to bed? Oh, I never thought of that. Oh, you must have. That's a big thing now. You can get the pajamas and the mask, and, uh, you know, if you got a water bed, you can get some flippers. <laughs> My husband and I sleep in a regular bed. You and your husband sleep together? For 28 years. <laughs> well, then forget the robe. Get him some bifocals. Now, this looks like a nice robe. You look about his size. Would you mind trying it on to give me some idea? I can give you some idea without trying it on. Oh, is that right? Yeah, now, you want to please your husband, don't you? Yes. Well, you know them mud packs that women put on uh, so they can look pretty? Yes. Well, take yours off. Well, I never. Maybe that's the reason. So now, we've got the big deal worth 10,000 plus behind door number one or door number two or door number three. And well, what door do you want? Take door number three. Door number two is the winner. Door number three is a zonk. She, she picked number two. Yeah. Now watch what she gets. See there? She ended up with a cow with a straw hat on. <laughs> I can't figure it out. It's too late. I can figure it out, Herman. <laughs> Lady's just stupid. Wait a minute, Fred. Why do you say that? Well, how many smart people do you know be dressed like a pizza? <laughs> And another thing that makes her stupid is she listen to you. You're not so smart either. What about yesterday on Jeopardy, when you told that woman that Sherlock Holmes is a famous housing development? Well, that was just an honest mistake. But what no excuse for you picking the wrong door. And besides, if you're so smart, how come you're just a junk man like me? If God wanted me to be a junk man, I am smart enough not to ask why. You know the trouble with you, Sadford? You have a narrow mind. 
And you know what the trouble with you, Goldstein? You got a big mouth. I don't have to stand here and listen to those insults. If I want to be insulted, I'll call my mother-in-law. I'm going. Who needs you? Who needs you? Oh, gay and thread and buck bait.